Good afternoon and uh, welcome to the Queen's Gambit. This is all of our entrepreneur queens, right? And uh, the idea is to have a conversation with them, to kind of figure out what their journeys have been, how did they get started, what challenges have they faced, and uh, what have been the learnings in the last few months as a part of the Bangalore cohort, so on and so forth. Uh, we'll have a lot of uh, interesting insights, conversations, and of course, we'll generally have fun trying to understand the journey a bit better uh, on what it takes to create an army of women entrepreneurs who can grow and scale their businesses and therefore create more jobs. One of my all-time favorite movies and one of my favorite actresses is uh, Sri Devi and, and the movie is English Finish. I love that, uh, that scene when uh, she's in that classroom and and, and the guy sitting next to her says, you're an entrepreneur. And she kind of rolls that word over in her and says, oh, I'm just not a housewife making ladoos. I know. But I'm really an entrepreneur. Right? And and, and, and you can see the, the mindset change, right? That, that occurs when then she fills herself with self-confidence to say, you know what, I am somebody in my life. So I'd love to understand what was that, oh, I'm an entrepreneur moment in your lives. Right? So, Padmini, can we start with you? Oh, by the way, this is Padmini Tanmay Bharati. Uh, maybe you can just start off by quickly introducing yourself. Oh, by the way, my name is Madan Padaki. Uh, I'm the co-founder of uh, GAIN, the Global Alliance for Mass Entrepreneurship. Uh, and this is in, uh, the series is being uh, brought to you in partnership with your story. Uh, uh, GAIN, of course, as many of you may be aware, uh, is catalyzing an ecosystem that can unleash an army of mass entrepreneurship uh, and entrepreneurs and, and really usher in a culture of mass entrepreneurship in our country where uh, entrepreneurs can not just survive but thrive and grow and therefore can we create more jobs and that's the whole mission of uh, game so with that uh, kind of introduction to game uh, Padmini do you want to yeah, just yeah. start off by introducing yourself and what was that aha moment for you be an entrepreneur. So I'm Padmini Govind and we run a studio called Sarangini Studio. I'm actually a second generation entrepreneur. So uh, I my journey to entrepreneurship came via engineering, fintech, defense, having spent 20 years in corporate wow. and then making the switch to do my own thing. And um, Sarangini focuses on sustainable, fair trade, organic textiles. We are the artisan studio. Mm -hmm. And it's been amazing to meet the rest of the cohort in game. A lot of like-minded people and very inspiring. Lovely. So how was the day when you quit your job and said, okay, I'm going to go in and be an entrepreneur? You, you know, that's a switch that's very hard to make. Yes, it was. And I remember having that discussion with my mother. Uh -huh. She said, are you sure you want to give up this wonderful corporate career working in multinational defense uh, deals and come and take over Sarangini, but it was instinctively, I felt the time had come. Of course, it is a challenging and overwhelming decision, but one that I have no regrets having taken. Terrific, terrific. We'll come back to you and I'd love to uh, learn more about, uh, you know, the origins of the business itself. Yes. Then you said you're a second generation entrepreneur, so yeah. Let's get to you, Tanmay. What's... Uh, you know, as you said, you you probably will be the only woman uh, that one can see in the Pena industrial <laughs> area. So you fairly, I'm, I'm pretty sure you're very famous and popular there in that, <laughs> in that, in that, in that uh, area. Would love to, yeah. Yeah. So um, thank you. My uh, name is Tanmay Vishwanath, and the name of our company is Bangalore Valves. Uh, we are now called BBK Turbine Parts. And it was started in the year 1984 by my father. Mm -hmm. And um, personally, you know, I was, uh, I did my BCom in Bangalore. I worked um, in risk advisory. I went on to do my uh, MBA from IIM Curico. Then um, I was working as a business consultant in an IT firm. I was in the US. Everything was nice and set. And um, on one Sunday afternoon, mm -hmm. my uh, father was mentioning to both my brother and me about how uh, BBPL is, you know, it, it's my father's baby. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think that we were working with, you know, like a few customers and a very big deal sort of didn't go through something mm -hmm. that was highly anticipated. And at that point, 
he just put out the idea that, you know, if you guys are interested, uh, maybe you can help us with our marketing. So mm. on this side, um, I think we took up marketing uh, and it was a very um, putting together an Excel sheet, having a lead list, uh, mm -hmm. cold calling, emailing, showing up at trade conferences. And then I was amazed by how uh, positive the response was. And this was not only in the domestic market, but also the export market. Mm -hmm. uh, because I think at the core of our company, we, we basically make aerospace, uh, defense and gas turbine parts. All of these are very, very stringent quality um, measures that you need to meet up with. So I think we have a great team and a great product. And that, I think, got us a very good response. And then that switch, I don't know at what time it exactly. happened. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it happened, but I wouldn't say it was a one day thing. Exactly. But mm -hmm. when, when I saw the results coming in, it was so encouraging. I was like, sure, why not? And then in 2018, I joined in full time. And Excellent. ever since, uh, I'm, I'm in Pina, yeah. <laughs> mostly, <laughs> mostly amongst men. Um, but yeah, I've, I've had an amazing experience. Wonderful. Did you ever, uh, if you look back, did you ever, uh, when, you, when, when your dad asked you to start helping him out in marketing and stuff like that, did you ever visualize that, hey, someday I'm going to be doing this full time? Or you thought, oh, let me just help my dad and because he's asking me. Did the thought ever cross your mind that this could be my full time? Honestly, no, mm. honestly, no. I think um, because I loved the job that I was doing, yeah. and uh, but I felt like if not now, when? You know, I think you can just continue to live a life comfortably if you're not experimenting with your own life, if you're not taking chances. And this is a family business; it's like our baby. Mm. Um, and I, I, it wasn't a conscious decision; it was something I jumped into, and I'm mm. glad I did. Mm. Of course, I've had moments of that every entrepreneur yeah. goes through of difficulty, but I'm glad I made that switch. Absolutely. Wonderful. Uh, now, I think you'll, uh, this is not a field that sees a lot of women entrepreneurs. I'm sure you'll inspire a lot more of our women entrepreneurs to look at the non traditional spaces, so to speak. Sure. Right? Of, I would love of some manufacturing of, yeah, <laughs> especially in Pena. Yes. <laughs> Great. So let's get you, Bharti. Uh, how and when did you start? Then? When did I start? Uh, my name is Bharti Kamath. I started this company, Carewell Facilities, uh, two decades ago. Mm. And it was a long, long time when we had uh, no mm, support like game or no support of the government. And um, I started this business and I come from a traditional family. Uh, which was broad minded, but then to think that, you know, I would start something like this mm. to manage a large workforce was unheard of. And um, today, Kevin has evolved into a comprehensive uh, um, service provider uh, for upkeep and maintenance for all segments of the industry, you know, and we are now lo even looking at the home front part of it. And um, I must say that. Um, when you an entrepreneur starts something and launches something you know you're bound to face challenges and mine was no different i learned one thing there was abundance of failures and you learned how to accept no for an answer mm. from a lot of people and but there is one thing that kept me going that was my my pursuit was relentless mm. and uh, i kept uh, pushing myself forward to see that my vision is translated into life, what I mm. believed it should be. You know? And uh, today um, we are, we have several verticals in this company, which addresses all the facility management thing. But here I must admit one thing that what really helped me, I did not have the mental support or a professional support system mm. that most people I see have now we we had nothing okay at least I had nothing mm. other than other than my family support I did not get anything else but what really helped me was my stint with the hotel industry for 13 years where I was heading the housekeeping mm. department and when I worked there I developed a deep respect for the kind of work and the 
support that mm. is required for a very large operation to run smoothly. And uh, that was, I think, that set the foundation for my future. Mm. And uh, it is going on. And I must mention at this point that uh, almost 40 to 50% of my employees are ladies. Wonderful. And um, I feel, and I see that the multifold impact that um, this has made to the lives of yeah. people, you know, is like a high level driver for me mm -hmm. in my entrepreneurial journey. And uh, I'm thoroughly enjoying it and I'm very passionate about whatever I do. Wonderful. Oh, I'm so delighted to hear, especially about the purpose and the passion that listen, it's just not about our employees. Uh, it's about the difference we make yes, in their yes, lives yes. Uh, or, or you were talking about artisans yeah. and, and, and the difference that you can see uh, being made in their lives. I, I completely believe that, uh, you know, any entrepreneurial journey that starts with a passion and a purpose much beyond uh, profits. Yeah. Right? Of course, profits are, are yeah. important yeah, in the life important. of the business. But if we can anchor ourselves much beyond that, then you'll enjoy the journey. I mean, you can... It you know looks what, like uh, you just started off yesterday. I mean, it doesn't feel like the enthusiasm and energy that you have for 20 years. <laughs> uh, Madan, but I must tell you something. I've spoken to about 400 employees of mine and not one of them want their children to be in housekeeping. Mm. They all have aspirations yeah. where the children want, they want them to be doctors, sure. they want them to be engineers. Yeah. Something. And that's where I find that what I'm doing is very purposeful because whatever they are working and earning, yeah. it's making a huge difference, difference to, to their lives. Life. Yeah. yeah, wonderful. Yeah. Now, there's also a very interesting play here, right? So, and let me just uh, uh, kind of articulate that uh, and, and see if you can find some differences and commonalities. You you were in the you were in the hotel industry in the housekeeping space. I selected housekeeping when I did my management training. Okay. And then obviously you, you, you cut grew. your teeth there, yeah. you grew, and then you realized that there's a massive opportunity yeah. Uh, in the whole uh, facilities yeah. management, and that's how you started yeah. uh, Kerala. Correct. Right. So you you came from that domain. Yes. Right. But for you, you didn't come from that domain at all. Yeah. Right. Manufacturing was as far away as one can imagine. Yes. From the world that you were uh, living in, right? And uh, Padmini, I'm sure you would have grown up in the family hearing about, uh, you know, but defense and uh, and saris or whatever. <laughs> Is, uh, is again, it's, 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 a, it's a complete nine yards of difference yeah. in a way, right? It is, but the good part of having spent 20 years, not just in defense, but different te technology verticals, mm. especially overseas, is you can bring in some of those processes to a traditionally exactly. unorganized sector, as I'm exactly. sure Bhaktiji also dealt with those yeah. people there. And it's those certifications, whether it's the organic certification or the sustainability, and now we are going to be one of the first studio, artisan studios in India to get ISO 2026 sustainability wow. certificate. Okay. So it's it's sort of bringing in processes to a traditionally exactly. unorganized sector, exactly. which will promote the artisans that are involved to a whole different level yeah. and give them the visibility that they need. Exactly. And that's the goal. So, so, so the underlying theme that you're saying is, listen, it, it probably does not matter which field you choose, as long as you bring your energy, yeah, yeah. the passion and the enthusiasm for making a difference. Yeah. And of course, applying basic common sense and whatever principles you've learned in your past lives. Yeah. Uh, what's been your experience in dealing with the whole new world? So for me, I think, um, you know, like we were talking about the larger purpose, I'd just like to add, I think I, accompanied my father for several customer visits mm. sometimes and the respect that I can see for mm. everything that he's built mm. he's always spoken of as a gentleman mm. everyone has respect for his work and our company and the mm. work that we do and similarly when I go to our shop floors everyone is so respectful of everything that has been built with so much hard work that it really stirs you to then continue that right. legacy. Mm. It definitely does. Mm. So that was my moment of subconsciously, of course, mm. it, it wasn't like in my head. Mm. Um, and that, and it, initially, of course, I was scared that I come from a non-engineering background and this is so yeah. core technical. But I also realized after all my MBA that business is business. There are some yeah. underlying factors like um, the core of it should come from 
your customers, which then means good marketing, mm. managing your, your finances well. And that's something I have been trained to understand. And that's definitely something that I bring to the table for BBPL. And, yeah. um, and it doesn't matter that we're in engineering. Um, I have people, excellent technical people, mm. and I'm bringing exactly. in the business yes. um, intelligence. So mm. why not? Yeah. No, I, I still remember two decades ago when I started yeah. Meritrack, uh, completely from a, uh, none of us in the founding team knew anything about testing, assessments, HR, recruitment, nothing. I was selling software. My partners, was, one of them was working for 3M selling carpets, and the other guy was coding. Mm. Right? So a lot of the HR guys just said, you guys, what do you know about HR? And we did two things. One, we used that to our strength. And I'd say, because we don't know anything about HR, we are able to bring in a newer perspective. Absolutely. Right? Yeah. Though I, I think that point of time, that was the only line of defense we had. We didn't have anything else. Yeah. But the other thing I'm hearing all of you say is that we learned like crazy on the job. Yes, absolutely. Right? So we struggled hard, tried Very to figure hard. out and stay one step ahead of the market. Right? And can you then acquire that learning on an ongoing basis on a continuous uh, pace? And I think that's a very critical entrepreneurial trait as well, right? How do you learn fast? How do you fail fast? How do you fail forward? Right? So on that note, on the journey that you've been several years, uh, were there any moments when you woke up on some days and said, why the hell did I choose this path? <laughs> and you tear your hair out. I mean, we, of course, given the, the quantum of hair I have, you can, you can be sure that I've torn my hair out several times. <laughs> And that's not the case with <laughs> all of you guys. Uh, You're stronger. Uh, we are much stronger. You're much stronger. Yeah, absolutely. You <laughs> yeah, so what's been, what's been those moments of frustration like? And how do you deal with that? How do you still, I mean, of course, how do we continue to deal with that? It's not, it's not always in the past. I think, you know, we have to constantly pivot. I mean, even speaking for Tavinini, we had such low points because unless we change the business from being a domestic, traditional, <clears throat> being more into contemporary and millennial friendly, mm. we would have not even made it past 2009, mm. considering we started in 1977. Wow. So there were several of those moments and you literally have to think on your feet uh, post pandemic. And it's been such a challenging yeah. time for all businesses. Yeah. Um, but I think it's, uh, you know, one of the core traits, as I'm sure you would realize too, is just being resilient and mm. going with the flow, not knowing what to expect the next mm. day and finding mm. a way out of it. Mm. And so what keeps you going in moments like that when obviously ambiguity is all over the place? That's what I think entrepreneurs have to learn, not just live, but thrive in ambiguity as well. So what's been your anchor that's that's had you and not, not, not make you give up because it's it's easy to give up. So, um, you know, I measure my personal success mm. and the success of Tavini mainly by social impact. Excellent. So, you know, mm. for me, the impact to the artisan <coughs> family, much like Bhatiji said about mm. how it has impacted the families of the people that work for you. Mm. I know one of our artisans, their sons work in Ernst & Young in North Carolina. So, you know, yeah. clearly they've come a long way. And yeah. They've been able to do a good job wow. for their family. Wow. And all the you know different pods and NGOs that we work with, that is a key metric for me. Of course, mm. we have to be profitable, but mm. that's our So you derive your strength metric. from from the impact that you see happening yes. out there and you feel that, hey, this it's needs to keep it. going. It's yes. worth it. Absolutely. Yes. Great. Terrific. What about you, uh, Mati? Yeah, like I said, I pursued one thing that in my pursuit, I was relentless. Mm. There have been many disappointments. Mm. Um, and especially, you know, about two decades ago, it wasn't easy for a um, lady to take on this kind of a job. It's more male dominated. Mm. And, um, but then I was strong um, and I went after it. And I, in a number of successes that I owe is when I didn't go through any recommendation, I walked myself into an office mm. and spoke to a large a corporate <coughs> person and just gave my background and things. And it really helped because, mm. you know, I suppose they saw the confidence in me and uh, uh, I just enjoy when I work with these people. And initially when I started, uh, I must confess one thing that I was the supervisor. I was the manager. Mm. I was everything put together. Yeah. Because, but I think when I look back, I really enjoyed what I was doing. Otherwise, I wouldn't have continued for so long. Mm. And now I've 
to come to game to see that I scale up. Mm. So some of them think I'm mad. You know, they say, what more do you want to do? I said, no, I'd like to scale up. Yeah. Because that's something very important. And where we started from housekeeping, today we have so many verticals. Mm. You know, so um, that is a great thing. And most important was, it may sound very small, but you know, the changes that we made with the um, women who were working, um, you asked, this is the mentality or the mindset that is there. Uh, we want an office boy. So I asked somebody once, why can't you have an office lady? Mm. You know? So I convinced the client, I got them into office mm. lady. They said, you know, we need boys, we have to run all these machines. I mm. said, no, I train my ladies to also run the machines. Right. So all our ladies run all the um, uh, machines. You know, there's nothing that they can't, can't do. Yeah. So the very fact, when I see these kinds of changes, mm. they may be small, but to me, it gives me immense satisfaction. Mm. And I will not give up. Wow. And I'll like to continue like this. Terrific. That's terrific. And Tanmay, uh, for me, what about you? For me, um, honestly, you know, the employee to employer switch was a big cultural shock. Mm. Uh, because I've, I've, you know, I've been uh, one of those that was a good student and at work would get all of these awards. And then when you then make the switch to an employer, there are so many times that you fail. Yeah. You simply fail. Sometimes you try everything that you can, but you fail. But um, so I've had a hard time, honestly, coping yeah. with that. But mm. I think what really keeps me afloat is um, when I just observe my father handling crisis. Mm. And I also, my husband also works with his father and they run a printing and packaging company. So both of them are veterans. They've run these companies for 30 years, 30 plus years. So when I just observe how they carry themselves with um, so much dignity, yeah. with so much, and, and in yesterday's session, I think MSR mentioned how being an entrepreneur is like a duck. Mm. Uh, yeah. You're paddling furiously, yeah. right? yeah. and then on the surface you look calm. Yeah. Um, and and I didn't realize at that point that that's what it is. But when you see role models, and these two are really my role models, uh, the way they carry themselves, the way they handle it. I think for me initially, when there was a problem, I would panic. Mm. And my father and father-in-law are like. That's a luxury you can't afford <laughs> you have to solve the problem. <laughs> and and it's something I've learned. And now when I have yeah. a problem, I get to solving yeah. it, not panicking. Okay. So that's helpful. Yeah. No, what you're saying this reminds me so much of uh, you know, as you as you're speaking, I was actually visualizing that scene. So my dad uh, was an entrepreneur and I grew up uh, seven standard eight standard. We used to run a very small uh, uh, travel agency. And of course, he started uh, one of Bangalore's first tire shops, but then later on moved to running a travel agency. So I remember in school, seven standard, eight standard, after school, you used to go and receive calls and handle customers and stuff like that. Uh, a lot of my colleagues now tell me, listen, there's nothing, you don't panic at anything. And I, I typically don't. Yeah. Uh, and they ask me how. I still remember the scene from, uh, from those days, I think it was in 90, seven or 98 or something and we were a fairly lower middle class that didn't have much of uh, savings or whatever and we were struggling as to get the business going and i think the first couple of years of starting this new business our uh, office got ransacked so somebody oh my God. came home in the morning at 6 30 i still remember saying hey your office shuttle seems to be open what happened you didn't lock it or something and uh, my dad was taking my taking a bath and he put me on a scooter and said, come, let's go. And I remember opening the shuttle, everything was gone. I mean, the, we had a small TV, the phone was yanked out, somebody had pried open the, oh uh, the, the cupboard. cupboard. Not, much, not that there was much of money, some five or 6,000 rupees, all that was gone. I still remember looking at my dad's face. Hmm, okay, let's get to work. Yeah, that's, that's it. it. Right? That's no, it. Wonderful. no emotion, no thing. How did this happen to me? I think. <laughs> it was stoic, yeah. right? And that in, that expression has stayed in my mind all along, right? So whenever I see things going wrong, I just remember him and say, okay, we'll handle it. As you said, okay, yeah. panic is a luxury <laughs> that you can't afford. I love that line, yeah. right? And you just go on with it because that's what 
and, and, and the moment you anchor yourself, as you said, uh, you know, with the pride that you see of yeah. your uh, employees, sons and daughters doing well, and that's a lovely story of uh, one of your artisan son being in the US, uh, everything else so means, seems so minuscule, right? And uh, see, finally, a lot, of, a lot of conversations I have with entrepreneurs, right? Uh, you can take as many external journeys as possible, right? You can teach, uh, we can talk about how to acquire a customer, how to manage cash, how to be profitable. But if your inner journey is not sorted out, yes, absolutely. right? Nothing of that external thing. And what's coming out of this conversation is all about that inner anchoring, absolutely. right? And if that is strong, you can weather any storm. That's why I said the foundation has to be extremely yeah. strong. Doesn't matter if we have not uh, scaled up much. Uh, I never looked at uh, the top line or the growth at any cost. For me, what was very important was um, what is the quality of service? Mm. We consciously maintain impeccable service, which is the USP of a high quality product, which is our service. Yeah. That was more important to me. Yeah. I think in yesterday's session also, um, one of the mentors who was there had yeah. said, you know, the number one thing he wrote on the whiteboard was integrity. Yeah. And that is many people that are, everybody has a competitor in the space, yes. but I yes. think that's such a distinguishing exactly. factor that can get lost in the soul during the scale up. Or, yeah. You know, yeah, absolutely. Anchors all of us. Yeah. And since we're talking about yesterday's session, let's kind of get to uh, discuss a little bit more about your experiences as a part of the cohort. First of all, uh, it's not an easy decision to make when, as you said, if someone were to ask you, some, come, you have to spend six months in this uh, in this program and you have to commit like two days a, a month uh, and these days are not just one or two hours, you've got to commit like yeah, eight, ten hours, hours or more. Uh, first of all, what made you to choose to be a part of this program? Right. What is that? What was that decision making process that went through as you decided that yes, I want to grow, uh, and and I'm willing to invest this time. And secondly, how's the experience been? I mean, what what has been the main learnings that you've had over the last uh, few months that we've been a part of the Bangalore cohort, the experience? So Tanmay, let's start with uh, with your reflections here. Okay. So um, actually, how I came across the program was uh, when um, a vendor of of ours um, sent me this thing, a message saying mm. that this program, ma'am, I think you will benefit imen immensely. Mm. I was touched that he thought of me when mm. he actually sent that message. Mm. And when I read it, we had just signed a five-year contract with a UK company and we're in the process of buying new machines mm. and uh, really scaling up. And it was, it was like God sent. When I read that, mm. everything that it touched upon mm. was exactly in line with where we're poised as a company for growth mm. and understanding all aspects of that, which is like building an order pipeline, managing your cash, managing mm. your capacity. So I think it was a very, I saw it and I was mm. like, that's it. This is talking to me. It's mm. God said, wow. and I'm going to sign up. Mm. And I was actually really hoping to make it. And I was so excited that I made it. And, um, you know, anything good comes with something that you need yeah. to, uh, make an effort yeah. for and I was more than willing to make that commitment mm. and I understood I mean I asked Supriya up front how many hours mm. and in my mind I made up that uh, and, and I'm glad I made that decision mm. uh, you know it's it's not a high level soft skill something that can't be learned over yeah. the internet it's real everyday problems mm. and it's core business it's yeah. marketing it's finance it's just personal motivation and um, it's everything you need to really run a business successfully. It's, it's hardcore stuff. That, mm. And uh, what I've learned over, so, so the immediate thing that comes to mind is um, sometimes you get so caught up with running the business yeah. that you forget that you're running it for your customers. You only, you only want to see them give you orders and mm. not truly understand what is the problem that DVPL is solving Solid for you. Them, yeah. And I think in so many of the marketing lessons that we've had, and other lessons, uh, the essence is to to really focus on your customer at the center and you're built around him, not the other way. Mm. And it, it seems so obvious, but unless someone calls that out to you and yeah. you build that out as a culture mm. in your company, mm. um, 
that's when it really starts. We are very customer centric in terms of getting the quality delivery, everything right, but having larger conversations to yeah. understand. And I think that's something that that's I've imbibed from this program and it's really helped open up avenues for us. Excellent. So that's Excellent. my key right now. Philip, what about you? Yeah, I was also very excited when I heard about this. Mm. I uh, Nobody told me about it. Mm. I got a call from Supriya. Mm. And uh, when she mentioned this later on, I got to know that CWE had mentioned that. Uh, and uh, referred you. Uh, yeah, I had referred me. And uh, she said, you'd have to go through five levels of interview. So I said, oh my, am I going back <laughs> to my first job? <laughs> and uh, <clears throat> when I went, I, I think some of them were mother skeptical because they said, you know, you've been in this business yeah. for so long yeah. and uh, you have, uh, you seem to be quite established. Uh, why would you Quite want to come and huh? uh, take up this? So for a minute, I was taken aback. Um, I said, so far, I've worked as a boutique facility management company, mm. but now I would like to scale up and do that. And I said, whatever I imbibe from gain, I said, it's going to be, it's a learning process, you know, mm. it's a lifelong process, whatever you learn. I can't say today that I know everything. And believe me, anyway, I'm very thankful that they gave me a chance and I was in it amongst all the cohorts. And then when I met all my um, cohorts, I said, ah, they're all raring to go. <laughs> and, and they have so much of time on their side. I'm much older. And um, I only wish I had that many years, maybe what I would have done in game was there. But then, uh, what I find that I found it really exciting and it's been very great, the journey, what we have gone through till now. Mm. And uh, believe me that uh, there are so many things that we have got to know in the, in the in game that, you know, I have started incorporating it and uh, implementing it in the company and um, I definitely see there's a paradigm change in the culture part mm, of it what mm, she um, mentioned mm. because like you don't learn about just one aspect of business it's like under one umbrella you have so many things that are going yeah. on so and literally you know they're sheltering us and teaching us exactly what we should do it's not that whether you've been in the business for 20 years mm. or you've been in business for one year mm. but the point here is that um, I only wish when I started I had something like this yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I must tell both of you you are so lucky that at this stage yes. in your business yeah. you people yes. have game to support and uh, I think it's just amazing I uh, but then I have also been to some other programs mm. where I'd enroll myself mm. and uh, thing but uh, I think the experience in game is totally different. I look forward to the program Excellent. every um, wow. week. And that, I think, makes a huge difference. Yeah. And I'm sure by the end of six months, I'm not worried whether I have scaled up my business or not. For me, what is very important is there are a lot of changes in my mindset. Yeah, exactly. And that you can't buy with money. Excellent. Very well said. Very well said. That you can't buy yeah. with money. And I know I will also scale up. And what's exciting is Suddenly, there seems to be a thrust for women entrepreneurs. Yeah. Okay. Now, there are some corporates who are asking for women entrepreneurs. And can you believe? HL has been told that 30% of the uh, supplies or service uh, should from. be given to women if mm. they can manage. And I've uh, got approved as a vendor. Wonderful. Congratulations. Wonderful. Excellent. <laughs> so I just see that there is so much to it. You know, the opportunities are great. And I think. I've got into game at the right time. Excellent. No, I, very, very beautifully said, uh, Bharti. You inspire all of us, really, Absolutely. because uh, I think that hunger to learn. Yes. And uh, what you said is absolutely right. See, scale is an outcome of a process. Yes. Right? Yes. If you do things right, it will happen. It will happen. Right? But the point is that you've got to do, do the right things in the right way. Right way? Only then if your mindset is there. If your way. mindset is there, yes. right? You can never really... Uh, you know, uh, in a way, by growth. No. You've got to go through the process and the journey Absolutely. and growth happens then. Exactly. Right? So, yeah. What about you, uh, Padmini? What's been your experience 
uh, you know, if you look at ROI of the time investment, you know, hardly the two hours that we put has a 2,000% return on investment in terms of data and inputs and information. I have never really been part of any cohort or formal program. It's all been on the job learning with, through mistakes or uh, learning the you know, hard way. ropes on the hard way. But here, not only do you get to share among the peers, you get top of the line mentors who come and tell you, this is how you analyze your finances. And you know, look at these numbers. So there's so much clutter in the information mm. that we get if you um, look online or you go to different other programs. It's all distilled into the right bite-sized pieces where you can actually implement the very next day when you go home and see the immediate results yes. of it. Mm. That I think is amazing because all of us being you know, busy entrepreneurs, we have to constantly be on the job. We don't have the luxury of sitting back and learning yeah. and thinking about it and saying, okay, you know, maybe next term we will look at it. It has to be immediate. Mm. And that's the difference of game. It yes. gives you things that you can implement the very next day and see the results the very next week. Mm. And that's really mm. different. It's not just high funda talk, you know. No, no, it's very practical. What I meant to say is it's very practical yeah. and can do kind of yeah. a yeah. Um, yeah. thing that whatever they impart. Is something which is very simple and basic and you also when you ponder and reflect you feel why didn't we do this before <laughs> <Exactly>. <laughs> and and i went to these schools uh, and um you know this program is amazing i mean i i did a whole two-year program about this thing yeah. um but i guess it, it's different when you're taught theoretically versus from Applying someone it, who's yeah. done it and who's teaching you from their experience um it's fully, you know, uh, practical. Mm. So that's mm. been great. No, I think uh, what you're saying is music to our ears yeah. because this is almost the way we thought it should pan out, mm -hmm. right? Uh, in our theory of change, yeah. and we are very influenced by this uh, professor called Daniel Eisenberg, whom you must have heard yes, several yes. times. And Dan has been a fantastic sounding board and advisor to us. So his mantra was, was the following, right? Get very driven uh, entrepreneurs like you uh, help them to grow very quickly and he used to challenge us I used to ask so how can they grow in like one month he says you try it it's possible right because in our minds growth takes a long time sure. yeah. but just a few things that you can apply practically can open up doors for you right and so the mantra number two was help them grow very fast rapidly uh, and 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 when you're in a very tangible way right you mentioned that hey listen uh, you know, you got empaneled in, in HAL, you might have got a new customer, you might have contracted uh, or done a new way of looking at costs, whatever. And third, start celebrating each success and start celebrating each one of you in a way yes. what we're doing today, right? So that it can inspire a lot more people to go on the same journey. And more importantly, it will inspire the ecosystem players because a lot of people that I meet in the ecosystem we have tried it several times. We have sort of it's imbibed, you know, yeah. in some of them. Exactly. That we can't go forward. You know, success won't come so easy. Exactly. It's sort of just in our mind, it's, it's stuck possible. Like yeah. So we just have to change and say, now I feel with the game, for me, whatever I'm thinking of or dreaming of or my target, unstoppable now. Excellent. Excellent. Unstoppable is a lovely word, one of my favorite words. <laughs> so let's, uh, we are almost to the end of our uh, one hour. It, it just feels like that we're having a conversation for a few minutes. Yeah, I know. Uh, what would your, so obviously out there, we have a lot of entrepreneurs, women entrepreneurs like you, who have probably not begun the journey or who started the journey but still confused on where to go. So if you were to give an advice to your younger self, right? Uh, what would your words of uh, reflections and advice be? And, uh, you know, uh, what would you want to share? Because the idea is also that each of your journeys should inspire thousand other women entrepreneurs to embark on that journey. And that's when it becomes a movement. So, yeah. So, so for me, the only thing is, you know, have a success metric and something that uh, is rooted in your belief 
versus something that's just rooted on numbers or sales or revenues mm. for a month mm. because that can fluctuate. Mm. When you have that, that and that is something that's embedded in you, mm. that inspires mm. you, then nothing else in your journey, whether which is always going to be a roller Lovely. coaster, will mm. stop you. Wonderful. So find your passion. Yes. Find your purpose and go after it. Absolutely. And the journey will sort itself out. Right? Lovely. What about you, Tanmay? So uh, for anyone who is wanting to start and who still hasn't made that, uh, hasn't jumped in yet, I'd say there is no right time to do it. The right time is now. Yeah. Or the right time is the second after, not any time after that. Don't be afraid. Um, jump in. And uh, my biggest learning is there are so many people who are happy to help. Uh, there are so many avenues to learn. And as long as you're asking the right questions, mm -hmm. you, you will never have the answers to everything. Mm -hmm. Just ask the right questions, know where to look. Mm. And as long as you equip yourself with those two things, uh, you have all the resources, all the help you need to go ahead. So that's that. Okay. Okay. So what do I say? Yeah. Um, I tell every uh, person who would like to get into this journey that first have patience mm. and lay out your plan, a firm plan before you start on this entrepreneurial journey. But once you have done it, you have to be very relentless in your pursuit. Mm. So as she said, I would say the time is now. Mm. Go after your vision. There are so many organizations like GAIN, the government, or for instance, our own country with the culture, yeah. which is looking forward to see that women entrepreneurs succeed. So that would be what I would say. Well, those are a wonderful set of messages to end the show with. Uh, thank you very much for uh, taking the time. Thank you for uh, being the inspiration that each one of you are. I'm sure... Uh, You'll have competition in Pena with a lot more women entrepreneurs <laughs> after the show. <laughs> coming and studying off manufacturing entities. No, but this has uh, been amazing. Thank you so much. And uh, I, uh, from a game uh, perspective, uh, this is our purpose, right? We want uh, our target as a as a group over the next ten years is to create uh, and enable journeys of ten million entrepreneurs, <coughs> half of which being women. Uh, which is still very early. Uh, we don't know what the path and what the roller coaster rides will be, but we know we are anchored in that purpose, and we'll have fun doing this. And what more can we? Yes. Uh, what more inspiration can we expect from folks like you? Uh, terrific. So, wish you all the very best. Maybe we'll just end with our uh, XBN mantra. Yes. yes. <laughs> One. Why don't you lead it? Lead it for us. Okay. One, two, three. Get, Get set, set grow. grow. Thank you. Thank you very much for having us over. Thank, Thank you. Thanks, Madam.